The Road of Promise, or actually the Eternal Road, its original title, was conceived by a producer here in the States. His name was Meyer Weisgall. Who was running the American Zionist movement in Chicago. And the way he, he got money for the organization was to put on these huge spectacles, which the ticket sales then were the income for the organization. And he got the idea that, well, what if we, given the circumstances in Europe and some situations there that really need to be brought to people's minds, what if we were actually do a consciousness raising that's actually aesthetically really top end? He really was very concerned about what was happening in Europe at the time um, with the rise of the Nazis, but he didn't want to deliver a lecture. He wanted to put on a show and somehow through that show communicate the danger that we were in as a society. So I'm going to get the best director in the world and the best composer and the best writer. And he landed on Kurt Weill and Franz Werfel, who were both Jewish and were both fleeing this persecution in Germany. So once it was finished, the producer brought Kurt Weill and, and the whole crowd, Franz Werfel, over to New York by boat. And then the show didn't happen. One of the big issues was the fourth collaborator, Norman Belgettis at that point was on board. And Belgettis was an extravagant theatrical designer. And most of the ideas he had were spectacular and gargantuan and really expensive. Um, so the company went bankrupt just before the opening. So the 1936 opening didn't happen, but they got the money together. And finally, in January 1937, the piece premiered. Of course, it's a massive piece. By that point, Bill Gattis had basically disassembled the Manhattan Opera House so that, in fact, many of the best seats in the house had been taken out to make room for this huge set. It was excavated below and above so that it could accommodate a five-tier set that I think covered um, like five acres of stage space. Uh, it had a cast of over 200 people. They were using the pit for staging, so they actually had to pre-record the orchestra. It's the first instance of that that I've heard of in the live performance. They also had a smaller live ensemble that was in a different space, and the sound from that ensemble had to be piped into the auditorium. The show, as originally written, lasted uh, over five hours, and the, the final act of it went well into the morning on the premiere. And as soon as it happened, they knew they had to reduce it a little bit. So they took the ending of the show and put it back in an interior part of the show and reduced the overall time. So the next night when the audience came in, they got like a four-hour show. It's hard to imagine now any equivalent we would have on Broadway, but this was a commercial piece that ran for four hours with hundreds of people in the cast. It was a very big thing. Uh, and apparently sold relatively well, people were coming. The problem was, even if the house was sold out, you, they lost thousands of dollars a week. So that's just, that's not sustainable. Uh, and uh, by, I believe, May or so, uh, they just ran out of money again. And it remained unproduced for uh, 60 years after that, until a company in Germany put it back together. Um, and the Kurt Weill Foundation thought that there might be another way to do this rather than produce the original. In fact, uh, one theater, the Chemnitz Opera uh, in the former East Germany, uh, were just so committed and devoted to the idea of doing this that they basically said, you know, we're going to do everything we need to to make this happen. And indeed, they did the original whole piece as written by Verifol and Weill, you know, in the original full form. And uh, it actually toured to Brooklyn Academy of Music here in New York. And at, at four hours plus length and in German, it was, it was a little bit of a, a tough, you know, evening. And so when I found out that there was this new edition of it that Ed Harsh had prepared that had chosen really the highlights of the evening and rethought it purely as a concert piece, I thought, well, this is something that we could tackle. And the German version of that was premiered in March of 2013 in Dessau, Germany. And we are doing the not only the US premiere of the piece as a whole, but the world premiere of the English language version. And we're using much of the text from the original 1937 production. It is 
gets at all of the key points of the piece. It presents all of the strongest music of the piece. Uh, it's the full arc, dramatic arc, but it's presented in, in a form that is actually producible on a concert stage instead of in an opera house. And so that's the, 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 the kind of the, the genesis of the piece that the Collegiate Chorale will be doing. Thank you.